You're now listening to the Something Good Podcast Network. Please press any key to continue. Hello in there. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm sick of the dog in. All right. On that note, welcome to this week's edition of the Couch Potato. Hello in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alex. Morrison. Hello. <laughs> We are coming back at you after our Halloween fiasco that we do every year, and I don't think that was too bad. It, it was, was great. That I was had, fun. I, had a ball. I was sundowning. I was just like, the <laughs> last little cafe just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. That was working great. <laughs> I really need to get that additional connection for this thing so we can put all the mics out there oh, because yeah. good god that episode was meant because okay back story so you, uh, for the last two episodes of couch potatoes that you guys have seen on the feed um that bonus episode with chris and christy by the way fantastic episode that was meant to be like an extra yeah. episode that just came out because the week that came out was supposed to be the week that the halloween episode came out bro i was fighting with that fucking thing oh, yeah. and like finally i just got to the point where i was like you know what fuck it fuck it fuck it all to hell and i only edited like one microphone the way mm-hmm. i typically do the rest of them i pulled a mikey and just went fuck it i don't care <laughs> and just put it out there i listened to it it sounded fun yeah it's, it's a little roomy yeah. it's a little roomy <laughs> but i think you know we're also f- we also recorded in a kitchen yeah with dogs in the background <laughs> And here, the well, I haven't treated this room any different. Well, it's still not open like a fucking kitchen, and there's no giant door to the outside. <laughs> Actually, that is going to be one benefit because um, I mentioned it on this episode of Something Good For You that came out this last Friday. Uh, but we are recording in the brand new SGN Studios. The new office space is in the works of finally getting set up because I finally got my fucking apartment after all this time. <laughs> So, it, uh, yeah, I forgot exactly where I was leading with that because there was something I mentioned on Couch Potatoes that was going to be relevant to this or something good for you, rather, that was going to be relevant to this. But I've already forgotten, so fuck it. <laughs> I really did feel like there was something connecting that to something I wanted to say, but I don't remember now. How have you been, Chris? I've been working, man. <laughs> I thought I was going to get laid off, but no, I've been working so much. <laughs> So tired. So tired. <laughs> I just won't sleep. <laughs> nah, I started taking melatonin to sleep, and oh. and th- it doesn't work. Uh, I tried the one gummy, and then that didn't work. So the next day, I played it safe. I came home from work at like I got off. I get off work at six fifteen in the morning, so I get home around seven, and so I'm like, I'll, I'll take two. And these are like the Nyquil like version. These are like name brand. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, name brand should work. So I took two. Uh, nothing happened for like two hours. Uh, I took a nap <laughs> for like another hour, and I woke up. I'm just like, I don't, I, I don't think it works. <laughs> I just, I think this is a scam. I don't trust it. And then the next day, I took four of the motherfuckers, and I took like a five hour nap. Like you know how like a yeah, nap, yeah. Like, it's like going to sleep. It was no. a nap. And I woke up, I'm like, fuck, I guess I'll go to work. Goddamn. Well, it sounds like you need to get some more of those uh, Delta gummies or Delta chocolates you got that Yeah, that one put time. my dick in the fucking dirt, dude. <laughs> the only problem is they cost like eight bucks for a piece. Oh, uh, I, I got you for five on these chocolate peanut butter cups. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you cut these things in half, you are straight. I did find out, like, uh, so they did move me to another factory, pretty much, uh, hmm. because... Uh, the UAW strike still going strong. Um, so they laid a bunch of us off, but they took the six best of us and put us in a brand new factory down the road that is the same factory. But now none of us want to leave that factory <laughs> because it's so much nicer than where we were at. And like easier work or just nicer easy, environment? Nicer environment, great people, people who have been there for a long time that, that have just been working without help. Mm. And so they're so just grateful to have help. And 
the like, first day they're like hey do you want to fucking stay like by the end of the shift they're like you want to stay i'm like what for like first shift like no no motherfucker you want to stay permanently here at this factory yeah (laughs) yeah you're goddamn right i do uh it's a lot easier job it's not stressful they don't run production so it's it's fucking fantastic there's only five of us that work on it oh so it's a nice tight-knit group yeah but it's we're spread out throughout the factory because we're all doing the same job but there's only five of us that can do it which is nice yeah so uh there's job security <laughs> but uh no it, it's a it's a great job man I'm, I'm really excited to you know keep keep going there my super my new supervisor is just like i, I went up to him i'm like hey i want to stay he's like yeah that's fantastic i'm like is there any paperwork i need to fill out no i got you enjoy your vacation because i'm going on vacation nice yeah, so yeah. i'll go back to work till tuesday night <laughs> fuck yeah oh and I actually in the middle of all that i remember what i was gonna say with the new apartment and, and it hit me when you stopped talking for a second i went oh that's what it was notice how quiet it is in here no dogs no dogs and the apartment i got is no longer right next to the fucking highway so you don't get all that fucking car noise too dude it's so weird when i'm just like it's because tomorrow's my day off i got my two days off for thursdays and sundays we're recording this in the middle of the week because like you said you're going on vacation so during like those thursdays and sundays I've been sleeping in way too easy yeah. because I'm not hearing a fucking thing. The most I'm hearing is maybe the occasional car starting up and like leaving out of the parking lot, but yeah. like no more of that fucking yeah. from the fucking street and people blasting their stereos. Dude. No buses rolling by. No. Like, like seriously, you don't even hear like the of like the, you know, hydraulics, you know, spit, um, releasing their air pressure and shit. Nothing. It is so nice over here, dude. I've, for, I've forgotten what it's like living near quiet. Probably the loudest thing is you got the Sunday trash man. Uh, that is a fucking trash man. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't no such thing as Sunday trash man. <laughs> I say to uh, Speaking of the amazing one-liners, you guys definitely check out this fucking guy here on the Something Good Network. Jesus fucking Christ. Me and, uh, <laughs> Every episode needs to just come with a content warning. Like, I love these guys to death, and they've made this joke on their show, and I'll reinforce it here. The thoughts and opinions of this fucking guy do not... <laughs> do not necessarily relate to the something good network as a whole if they ever say anything reach out to mikey reach out to dante they've got instagrams yeah (laughs) chris dutton you can reach out to me the old-fashioned way by phone (laughs) by phone you just call them you just call me right up (laughs) talk to me directly i'll give you that customer so hello this is chris with the something good network on a recorded line how may i help you (laughs) Of course we don't think they're people. They're savages. <laughs> God damn. Did you know Butterfingers is a shiv? <laughs> that actually would be kind of funny if uh, there was a service that like... <laughs> yeah. No, hold up. Don't don't be getting too ahead of me now. Um, if I've, already, there, I've already got the fucking promos set up. I got the intro, intro going on. <laughs> I know, right? You don't even know what I'm saying. You already got the plan. If there was a service that you could like pre-program like 50 different sound bites and every time you called the number a randomized sound bite played oh, yeah. and that would just be so great to have the chris morrison hotline and record like 50 random things upload it to that site and every time they call hey this is chris morrison with the something good network did you know that butterfingers can be used as a shiv yes yeah. in fact yada yada blah. And it's just a little one minute thing you'd be like and for more entry and more information like this check out whatever show it would relate to you know the cryptic conspiracy cult right here on the something good network yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. It's, their podcast is very fun. Oh, it's extremely fun. Yeah. Very chaotic. Uh, and also, but, fuck uh, them. Oh, yeah. Fuck them. Chris, how long and I, how long have you and I alone? Because you even jumped in later on. Cap and I initially got all this role, and you hopped in a little bit later on. Just between the time that we've been doing it, how long has that been? Probably over, over two years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Have we ever gotten any sponsors? I'm not really trying. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been knocking on Betty Crocker and shit. These motherfuckers 
by the time this episode's being recorded, have just released episode 12, and they've got a fucking sponsor. Good. I'm happy Fuck for them. them. I'm happy for them. Swear jar whiskey, and now I'm calling you out. Motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, Diet Coke and Ghost ain't really, you know, or, I'm just saying, you're shooting for fucking blue chip over here. <laughs> they got some no-name whiskey on the side. Like, hey. I look for the best, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> you keep shooting them blue chips, motherfucker. No, but in all seriousness, though, yeah. congratulations to those guys. That's yeah. fucking awesome. Those, that's yeah. fucking awesome. <laughs> well, it's like, uh, you know, LPN, you know, one of their, uh, when they when they finally, you know, turned over after like their 30th fucking episode and they were still part of uh, Cave Comedy Radio and stuff, they they didn't get a big one until Trolley Gummies came along. And yeah. like, that was their big one mm-hmm. for the longest time. And then it became like Better Help and all those other fucking shit. But like, trolley gummies commercials were just like constant <laughs> and uh, i will say this uh in like podcasting they have actually if you go back and listen to those old episodes those advertisements are gone and been replaced with the newest ones so they've had to go back and edit old episodes out their old sponsors with their new sponsors and because I, I love listening to the old podcasts because they are dated yeah and i like like older reference information so when I go listen to like old episodes like Fraudsters or old episodes of like uh, TCO or something like that, yeah, all those ads have been redone to the newest stuff. That's interesting, which yeah. makes me also wonder if they're ever cutting out information, jokes, things nah, like it, that. No, nah, this one – you can kind of tell if they do, mm-hmm. but I've never heard it because okay. it's too smooth. Right. Like the cadence and everything's just too smooth. I, I mean, I was going to say, I mean, there, there there have been, especially in the early days, not as much anymore, but in the early days, I did some really sneaky edits of like yeah. having even voices overlapping each other mm-hmm. as if like we're, we're talking over each other as part of the edit. So, yeah. you know, you, you can do some real, you know, sly stuff without folks noticing. But yeah, no, there's... Going back to listen to those old ones because it's still they still use like their same Patreon stuff, mm-hmm. uh, but their Patreon stuff kind of goes fuller. Like the like a lot of shows I listen to on podcasts, if I go to the Patreon, they're like about fifteen to thirty minutes longer, right? Because uh, even without ads, even without ads, and LPN does this thing. Uh, if you listen to an episode and they start talking and they get really ramped up about something, and you sit here like a slight pause, and you'll hear. Uh, uh, rise from your grave and that's actually from altered beast the sega game yeah that's their cutoff point to where they cut it off and left that in the patreon ah that's like their pause thing interesting yeah to keep them from going on a wild goddamn tan instead of having like joe rogan level fucking episodes where they're like three hours long they're like here's an hour episode <laughs> <laughs> because we bullshitted after that sentence too long <laughs> way too long yeah. yeah yeah it's like our shows could, our show could be like four hours long i don't give a shit oh yeah i don't care either <laughs> yeah. and, and also beware there is a something good for, uh, this fucking guy coming out that is ridiculously long. Good. They they have a long one. And the something good for you that just dropped, I think, is going to be close to two hours. Hell so yeah. we, we got a bunch of long content coming out well, here. Um, I got uh, some stuff lined up uh, that'll be post this episode uh, while I'm in vacation in West Virginia with Mr. Mikey Black. So we'll might have two or three uh, extra content episodes to be sprinkled into you to, from here to Christmas yes, or yes. Hanukkah or whatever religion dominates my viewership or hell um, it, it, depending on how many you guys get uploaded I might because it's cost me nothing to create like an extra RSS feed I might just make that little mini series special podcast thing yeah road like, trips <laughs> mm-hmm. like just road trips with Morrison and that, that isn't Oof. any of them that get updated regularly it's just anytime we take a road trip yeah. it's road trips with Morrison and Oof. it just gets posted to that feed I can see that going south very quickly just you and the side you, you riding with me somewhere let's say we go to Indiana or something just like get, grab my fucking gun grab my fucking gun stop crying out stop crying <laughs> Write that license plate down. <laughs> uh, I, and actually kind of thinking through it, that seems like such a fun idea. We really, really ought to figure out a way to get you a headset. Yeah. That way you like can just... headset? Uh-huh. That way you can just talk both hands off. Because it's going to be a little annoying if, for you to have to, like, one hand it for a little bit. Yeah, just stand, trying to do stand-up while driving seven yeah. miles an hour up the highway. Yeah, so, so having, like, a headset on would probably make that a little easier for you. Yeah. 
So we'll I'll I'll, we'll I'll cross look, that bridge when we get to it. Mm-hmm. Go, y'all do a test run this yeah. time just to see how it even works for you. But yeah. who knows, guys? May, maybe come twenty twenty four, there might be a new little mini series that'll pop up every so often called Road Trips with Morrison. Yeah, it's just me following someone to their house. You cut me off in front of that Dollar General, you son of a bitch. Yeah, I, yeah. No, I got your name. God. Yeah. I got your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have. Uh, we were kind of talking about this before microphones came on. I have a feeling that today is going to primarily just be a news episode. Yeah, it's um, going to be rough because the writer strike is lifted. I think the actor strike at this point is also lifted. Or it's like all but kind of situation. Yeah, so, so right now the writer strike is done to a point. Uh, they haven't really come to t- like certain terms. But there are ex- working terms. Working terms. Uh, concessions have been done. Uh, the actors kind of followed suit. Um, there is tentative ground on um, how their future, how the future will look with, like, if an actor passes away, mm-hmm. likeness rights and stuff like that. There's there's a tentative agreement on that for right now. Right. Until there's a big kerfuffle. <laughs> Yeah. So because of that, a whole bunch of stuff's finally getting put out in the news. So our we'll actually have a reason to have our news segment again. But before we dig into that and talk about all the news that we missed over the last couple weeks, thanks to our lovely listener, we do have uh, well inspiration by our lovely listener rather by, by my lovely wallet. We have one more uh, hard monster flavor to try, and this one is going to be peach perfect. Mm. Mm. and honestly that's that's kind of the reason why i held this one to last i feel like out of all the flavors this is going to be the most tolerable because yeah. I, like fake peach is just a peach ring flavor yeah and i love a peach ring i love that shit that that's like that that's that sneaky good candy you, you usually don't like think yeah, to so grab it you're at the fucking corner store you're at your 7-eleven you're looking through you're looking at your sour gummy worms you're looking at your you know sour patch kids you usually look over the uh peach rings but man just reach for them just grab a bag they're fucking amazing you ever go to those candy stores in the mall yes and that's one of the few places you can actually find those red and black little raspberry looking things and they are the shit yeah the peach rings are always beside the sharks Mm -hmm. fuck the sharks (laughs) that's my opinion god damn it hard 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 opinion uh, yeah hard stance man you gotta you you have to stand by your beliefs stand by your man i get you that's right <laughs> well, let's get that obligatory can crack up on him wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the beast <laughs> where's dooley <Yeah. laughs> every time you crack that you should just uh, edit in del gribble the beast <laughs> the beast <laughs> I can already tell by the smell I'm actually going to like this one. I'm actually kind of happy about this. Got like a pale ale look. It does. It does. It almost has a uh, peachy hue to it. Oh, look at that. You'd almost think I had a little sister that bitched at me that drinks aren't even. (laughs) Bob, Alex poured more beast in his glass. Uh (laughs) Alex has more whiskey than I do. Aren't you guys like five? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, good sir. Gin, gin. Not bad. Yeah, I it dig on taste, that. It doesn't taste like monster. Mm-mm. Does it have that liquid metal taste? Nope. All right. So this one and there was that one flavor that I, oh the Lipton iced tea. Yeah. Yep. So this and the Lipton iced tea are so far my two favorites. I dig on these. I think uh, me and Mikey, depending on who we meet up there. You know, West Virginia. I might be doing some taste testing up there, too. Ooh, some uh, genuine taste testing. Hey, what's this green stuff? Uh, it's something. <laughs> Quit asking questions and take a sip. <laughs> mm, tastes like PB&J. <laughs> no, that's not bad. It's, 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 got a, it's got the alcohol taste, like, mm-hmm. on the back end. But, like, if you were to just, like, just down this, you... Yeah. So speaking of uh, swear jar whiskey, uh, when we were over at Mikey's, uh, he was making a couple little mixed drinks for us um, before the show, and he was using the swear jar maple flavor. It tastes like candy. Imagine a dash of that maple whiskey in that maple peach. I don't know, man. That's that's a. It'd be weird. Well, think about like a peach cobbler. 
Yeah. Like you've you've got like kind of those sweeter notes and like the the sugars and the topping with the uh, crumble kind of has that mapley taste to a point. Yeah, that they come close to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Crown makes a maple that'll sneak up on your ass. Oh yeah. Uh, Crown goes down like water. <laughs> <laughs> I know from experience. Uh, I was gonna say you're saying it with the face of experience. My God, Lord's own mercy, right there. <laughs> but I feel like a judge. Well, all right, damn. So yeah, Beast <laughs> Unleashed Peach Perfect. By what does it take to work? That's not half bad. So yeah, this this one didn't disappoint me. That's the one monster flavor I liked. Uh, I think the it looks like it just the energy drink, honestly. So like. You could just take that to work and get shit face on the two of those. You really could. Uh, it's not like taking an upper and a downer at once. So the official Alex Stiff ranking of all of these different beverages we've had mm. out of the monsters, the peach is the best out of the wild cards. I would either say the Coke and Jack Daniels or the Lipton iced tea. And then for the, what was the other brand we did? The Mountain Dew, the watermelon one. I'd have to say those are all my favorites from the ones we've tried. Uh, the orange Mountain Dew was fantastic. The Lipton, if you like orange soda, you yeah. will love that one. Uh, and you're talking to somebody who hasn't drank orange soda in a very long time. Um, the Lipton iced tea, perfect. The Jack and Coke, it tasted like you got it from a bar. It was fantastic. Well, I think there's like actual whiskey in it because yeah. you can only get it at ABC stores. Yeah, yeah, it's an actual whiskey. It's not grain alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but this, you know, this is... A solid top five. It's in the top five. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd crack open a case and just buy one separate. <laughs> well, I mean, that's so that's what happened with that. So our listeners sent in the uh, the ice, uh, the white one. And then that was the grapefruit. Mm hmm. And then literally like a couple days later after getting that in, I was at the local Harris Theater up the road and um, you've got like those scratch and dent carts. Yeah. And apparently someone had busted open one of these containers. So they had like a big like corner of that cart just stuffed full of individual cans marked at a dollar each. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, you, for you a dollar. I, I don't know if you've noticed it. Uh, you know, Arizona teas, they come in like a tall boy can, right? Correct. They make regular cans now. Of Arizona, yes, of Arizona I've seen tea. that. You can get them like in the 12 packs. Yeah, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, that is relatively new because I remember you used to be able to get them in like the gallon jugs. You know, back in the day, you can get them in gallon jugs and it was only two brands. It was the Arnold Palmer or the green tea. That's correct. Yes. But then they came out with like 15 goddamn flavors mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was all tall boy cans because my favorite was the energy one. Really? You know, oh wow. God, no! That thing tasted like fucking like because they used like some sort of like what caro root or some shit in it. I don't know. It tasted so much like the Sobies energy. You remember Sobe? Yes, the pink Sobies. Yeah, and that all was that pink shit. Okay. Uh, so I, I never had them because I remembered seeing them all over the they're, place. They were expensive. Well, they were expensive, and I was also at the age where mom was like, "No, you're not drinking that." Yeah, but like uh, the Sobe energy had that flavor that same flavor and i like the energy tea back in the day i don't know if it had actually energy in it but i know i just like it like liked it the sweet tea is too sweet like i'll say straight up the arizona sweet tea is just fucking awful the only arizona i even really ever reach for are the arnold palmers yeah i like those the lemon the lemonade and tea mm, but I, but if it it's not like that i really don't care yeah but no i bought a i went to go buy a uh this tall boy energy or tall boy arizona tea is a green tea because that's all they sold at the grocery store out of tall boys they didn't have any other ones it's kind of it's kind of shitty because i remember like you get those things every day yeah and now from what i understand they're not 99 cents anymore which is yeah in certain locations so like the harris teeter up the road they're still 99 cent uh if i go to the actual can aisle uh you can still get them for a buck however like specifically the tall boy cans are still 99 cents but then the you can get the are, bottles yeah. for an even dollar no and i'm just like and it's like a quarter of the fucking amount. I'm just yeah. like, what the fuck is this bullshit? You know. <laughs> Don't be doing this to me now. <laughs> Not in my goddamn country. <laughs> Where is my country going? Yeah. <laughs> we used to be a civilized country. <laughs> well, I remember, like, uh, for the longest time, for, for for a short period of time, Pepsi had the best marketing scam, which was Pepsi and Mountain Dew with real sugar. Oh, yeah, the throwback. Fucking delicious. <laughs> now, why do you say marketing scam, scheme, whatever? 
because all they did was switch out corn syrup for sugar. Yeah, that's all they did. And well, they, that's not really marketing. That's that's an actual flavor. Yeah, but they try to like, make it like, oh, this is what it used to be. No, this is not what it used to be. Half the ingredients in Mountain Dew were, didn't exist back then. You motherfuckers just started adding shit and make make it taste funny. <laughs> Mountain Dew now tastes disgusting. Well, I've never liked Mountain Dew though. I used to. That's the problem. Like the Mountain Dew I had as a kid doesn't taste the same. Right. Now, that's why I switched to, like Mellow Yellow, a superior green drink. Well, as we said a few episodes ago, fuck all that. I want my Sierra Mist back. Oh, God, just pussy Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, but like, I think I've had Sierra Mist like four times my entire life. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I, I never liked Sierra Mist. It's like those kids who drank Seven Up. Never trusted them, motherfuckers. Seven Up, Seven Up's not good for you. <laughs> they are the PlayStation kids. Yeah, they're crisp and clean and no caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking lame ass. You like the guy that drinks the gold? Uh, the gold? Uh, the gold Pepsi and gold Cokes. Ugh. Caffeine free. Yeah, the fucking caffeine free shit. God, it's like sugar free, caffeine free, flavor free, fun free. Did you just buy a soda stream and just put food color in it? it seems fucking like it. Well, it's like the hard seltzers. I hate the hard seltzers. I don't know why people pretend that they think they taste good. We that's just a tried a bunch of them though. Yeah, literally, not- we have. I have one still in my hand. That's not a seltzer. The energy drink. It's a soda with liquor. There's in no it. energy in it. It's a beast. There's <laughs> no energy though. Look at it. There's no caffeine in this. It's a damn shame. No, because it, it's actually illegal for there to be caffeine in an uh, in an alcoholic beverage now like that because of Four Loco. You know, this what's the problem with America? <laughs> this is a little this is a little snippet of Chris Chris's grind my gears. Back in the day, caffeine and alcohol were simpatico. That's Spanish for fucking together. <laughs> Man, I I don't have the time or energy to do this. <laughs> I wish, though, I had, like, a fan base, like, Retin Link or, like, Game Grumps have, where, like, people will go through and, like, snip shit out and make compilations. Mm-hmm. I would love a compilation of, like, starting five months ago when i was like yeah they have these monster um flavored hard seltzers and you're like "Ooh, caffeine mixed with alcohol that's not a good idea and i go nah chris i don't think there's any caffeine in it i think it's just branding fast forward about three episodes later oh yeah that monster uh, energy fucking alcohol shit i don't know chris i don't think there's any caffeine in that <laughs> all the way up to today look at the fucking can there's no caffeine <laughs> yeah, it's just you just didn't want to believe it you wanted no, to believe that we were still a civilized country i did <laughs> but we have not we have when fallen. we get to this new segment i will tell you how fucking awful our goddamn country <laughs> we is. have fallen from the graces of god and we can no longer have our yeah. true fun however you still got your diet coke though that's good i do have my diet coke for now for now but however <laughs> are you switching up there buddy <laughs> <laughs> well the way you're making a sound is gonna fucking disappear off the shelves here soon although fuck you 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 made me paranoid about that because as soon as you started talking about it i can't find the fucking single serve bottles at harris teeter anymore mm-hmm. and every so often 7-eleven will go like five days without stock Something's going on up in here. It's a goddamn psyop. Fucking conspiracy, man. A cryptid cult conspiracy. <laughs> nah, fuck that. It's time to move on over to our news segment. All the news this week. First off, probably one of the coolest pieces of news and probably the oldest piece through all this. College humor is no more yeah so they've all just uh, under the umbrella of dropout mm-hmm. and uh along with their announcement which came like i believe it was a like one-year anniversary yeah mm-hmm. of sam reich's video uh he also stated that there will be probably more content now added to dropout uh no price change listed um but yeah it's fantastic but they're still going to keep the backlog stuff for college humor I think it's very exciting, especially watching all of this, because 
they're adding more content they're not raising the prices and they were the one of the first independent companies to adhere to the writers and actor strikes so they could actually start working again like sam was one of the first ones just to be like well fuck yeah i mean we're, we're gonna pay you what you want like you know we yeah. agreed to these terms how about we get back in business yeah plus you know adam conover who's a big part of dropout anyway uh, who i think i think what people don't realize is when college humor kind of branched out and kind of got in that weird scapegoat of fucking uh, YouTube, mm-hmm. saying what happened to Cracked, but they survived, was they were able to go to TBS and do content. Like, Adam Conover had a show on TBS. Adam ruins everything. I remember yeah. that now. And that was just a YouTube thing. And, and then it got to TBS. And I think that's probably what was the kick in the, t- like, kick in the butt. I mean, like, we could just do our own goddamn network. And that's what they did. Um, and it's it was so fast within that first year. You know, they had uh, um, Game Changer. And then it's from the spinoff of Game Changer. Make some noise. And, and then, all the Dimension 20 stuff. And then Play It By Ear, which was another spinoff of Game Changer. And then you had... Uh, drinks out or whatever it's called the alcohol show uh, um actually i'm um, actually which was just another nerd game show but it really fell on to the original cast members of dropout uh plus brendan lee mulligan plus sam reich you know they really pulled it out of the bag and did a perfect you know transfer yeah of talent and still kept like we knew dropout was dropout but we're just like yeah still call it humor you know yeah but now that it's fully dropout, I think with there's so much talent now that that spans any kind of likability through like like fandoms and stuff that they will be able to hit almost every demographic they want. Not that they need, but they want, which is yep. very good because we've watched, you know, we, we grew up watching channels that tried to do certain demographics Mm -hmm. and we would catch some stuff that we would like. And then later on, we started gravitation toward those channels away from the channels we used to watch, you know, same same thing as growing up, you know, you used to watch Nickelodeon and then you watched the cartoon network. And if you had money, you had Disney channel, (laughs) (laughs) but like, but like, then you went from that to like comedy central or MTV, Mm -hmm. you know, with those kind of things. And, Dropout's able to keep that all under one umbrella for like five or six bucks a month. I know. It's it's amazing. And one of the other things that I really look at those guys for is, you know, I am all about branding and marketing and promotion and everything. I honestly believe if Dropout continues on the trajectory they are and, you know, it honestly gets noticed a little bit more mainstream like i would say fringe pop culture and mega nerds know about dropout and college humor they do have the potential of like really catching like the general public's eye if that happens i believe that in a good five six maybe even ten years from now folks are Specifically, people in marketing are going to go back and look at the transition of college humor to dropout and have like, like create a day's lesson plan around it. How much of a genius name is dropout as from college humor? Yeah, it's just a continuation name. Yeah, you were in, you had college humor, but nine times out of ten, if you had that college humor, you were probably what? A dropout. Yeah. So it, it works, and, but the, and they, as a company, dropped out mm. of that initial partnership they had with the other owner of college humor. Yeah. It's such, I don't know, I guess just the marketing nerd in me just like looks at the name and the whole transition just being like, that's fucking genius, and it, and it was right there. It was right in front of their faces, and they just grabbed it and did so much with yeah, it. Yeah, a wishful, a wishful thing for me on this one. Within the next two years, um, if they were to continue to grow and add and add and add, you know, content, I would love it if they would add two former competitors. The first one, not really being a competitor. But the OG guys from G4 as just one show and bring back the original, you know, game, sh- the, the original show. Yeah. Just bring back the original show, but through Dropout. Mm-hmm. Keep the original guys. Don't use the newer people they had. Just keep the original people. If they want to come back, 
And on top of that, bring in the guys from Cracked. Yeah. As a separate entity. Like, just bring it back as like, hey, guys, you remember After Hours from Cracked? That was fucking hilarious. Let's bring that back. Let's, let's bring it back. And because Dropout and College Humor in general is made up of people who did, like, voice work. Yeah. And then you had the, the second generation of College Humor who did a lot of animation. Improv and, in, in yeah. comedy and stuff like that. So these people all together are under the same umbrella, and I think that would be nice to have them all under Dropout, under a streaming service. And at this point, I wouldn't care if they increased the price by a few bucks. I because wouldn't. they would be justified in it, not I wouldn't. Netflix. Or Disney. Disney went up to 20 Talk about a major kick in the balls on so I'm that paying, one. I'm paying 20 now for that. My yeah, Netflix never went up. My Netflix never went up. Oh, see, mine went back up. See, mine didn't go up because I had additional screens already. So, yeah, my mine went up and my Disney went up. So yeah, yeah. HBO went up. <sighs> so, but you know that's that's here nor there. You know, Dystopian future, yeah. yay! That's coming up. Uh, <laughs> but like, but with that happening, I could see like other streaming services that want to pile it out a little bit. Maybe yeah. guys on the internet and stuff like that could really do something with the streaming service because i can imagine like a band of twitch streamers getting together mm-hmm. and doing something like this and see i honest it i think that from my standpoint they could probably pull in cracked i think that's probably something they actually have like semi on the mm-hmm. table of like hmm wonder if we could ever do this and honestly ma'am I believe that if G4 had not had that failed relaunch last year, that could easily be a potential. Yeah. But unfortunately, I kind of know that like the OG guys from like Attack of the Show and fucking X Play, this last go round on the merry go round completely burned them out. Like they yeah. were like it took a lot of convincing for them to do it anyway. And then after this go around, they're like, okay, 1000% seriously, fuck all this. So I would love to, again, I was so fucking excited when that revival was happening. I would love to see it happen. But seeing the stuff that Adam Pereira and Adam Sessler, I mean, Kevin Pereira and Adam Sessler were saying after the fact, I don't. I don't think it's ever going to happen. Yeah, that's why I said it's kind of like a wishful thing. Kind it of thing. is, but cracked. I think you landed something yeah. on that. I think that is something that they could merge with in an applicable and friendly way. Yeah, because another part of College Humor was Dorkly. Dorkly is, is actually still all on dropout right now. Um, and, you know, some of the other content that's coming up on there is uh, two new Dimension 20s back to back. Like the year's not over, and they just started one for this Halloween season. And it's for those who you know, enjoyed literature or watched a terrible movie called Watership Down, which is basically a holocaust of rabbits, um, or Ricky Ticky Tavy. Uh, they've got a Dimension 20 like D&D game based on a group of stoats, which is kind of like a little weasel. Yeah. But it's a group of them, and it's, it is fucking horrific. Like, Imagine a family of your favorite, like it's kind of like Homeward Bound, mm-hmm. where the animals were trying to escape through the woods, or Watership Down. Who, if you know that reference, yeah, it is horrific. It is not for kids. These were stories that were told to us as kids, yeah, because the nineties was full of horror for children. But, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, that it is. It's a story of the these family of little stoats that are trying to survive in the forest against the ancient evil and it's fucking fantastic hmm. and then, guess what they still have two months to go which if they do a third one that'd be fucking impressive you're like i don't have enough time to watch all I this don't. shit i didn't finish i haven't finished the, uh, the other one that came out like a month ago <laughs> god damn <laughs> i'm burning out man <laughs> and i bet you hadn't even caught up on loki have you i haven't watched anything on disney <laughs> Except you're like th- 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 you, no i didn't even watch ahsoka <laughs> i watched the first like two episodes that was it <laughs> after that it was just like i got nothing. i'm working i got shit to do i got melatonin it's not working <laughs> <laughs> well that's what you need to do then just pull out your computer or your ipad or your tablet or whatever and just fucking watch that shit as you're falling asleep yeah 
<laughs> that's the time. I was going to say, I'm not sitting here saying I got all the time in the world, but I'll catch something right before I fall asleep. That's, that's how I've been catching up on all my horror movies. It's like the right before bed as you're like chilling. It's just like, all right, let's put a movie on. <laughs> what bothered me was, you know, when Ahsoka came out, like right before it came out, Ray Stevenson had died. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a big Ray Stevenson fan because I watched uh, the show Rome. He fucking fantastic actor he's a stage actor if you ever watch the other guys he's in that movie uh oh shit you're right there's two things i like in this world mate the dimples above a woman's buttock and kylie minogue damn <laughs> i did not like that just blew me back i did not connect those is damn a, is that a fucking wooden gun <laughs> <laughs> but no Ray stevenson was that guy who could be a comedy actor mm-hmm. or an action villain right you know and he, he was so good in you know Rome, and when he died, and I was I was really surprised. He was well, young. Yeah, he wasn't that old. Um, but I have heard some like fan theories on who who could replay him later on. Right. And, like one was Lib Shriver. I'm like, Ooh, that's a good pull because mm-hmm. Lib Shriver is fucking an awesome actor. I will say, uh, no spoilers for Ahsoka. Um, if you wind up not watching, it's all it. a dream. <laughs> If you want, Anakin to- wakes up next to Padme and Tatooine and a nice or a Tat Naboo in a nice, beautiful house because he quit the Jedi Order. And he's like, "Honey, I had the terrible dream where I stayed with the Jedi and killed them all." Oh, that's nice, dear. Four kids come running in. <laughs> daddy, daddy, daddy. There's Obi. There's Juan. <laughs> there's Luke and Leia. <laughs> but uh, I. Fine. You keep doing that now. I can't, that's that's why I wind up interrupting you so many times. Is because I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Now I forgot. Fuck. <laughs> It's the marijuana poisoning. No. <laughs> it's not the marijuana poisoning. I'm here drink, drinking RC Cola like a real American. You're there on the electric lettuce. Oh, uh, I remember what I was going to say now. Uh, if you wind up not watching it, though, um, I may wind up doing, like, that may wind up being that shit I wound up talking about all the time. Like, I'm going to do video content. Yeah. Well, maybe retrospectives on different series is where I'm going to get my feet wet doing this so who knows uh i'll watch it eventually but without spoilers uh ray was fucking great in this ray stevenson he he was great and the general story of ahsoka was really fun um it was enjoyable i think i enjoyed it more than obi-wan or even the most recent season of mandalorian Mm -hmm. Um, I still never watched um, Andor. Andor, but I people watched, are saying it's on par with that. I watched the Andor. It's it's very adult heavy, mm-hmm. and it's very um, content heavy. Yeah. So Andor is very content heavy, and it can make you upset because it's just how it kicks you in the gut. Yeah. It's kind of like the Game of Thrones of Star Wars. Like it's very like do not count on the hero to live through this. You know. Yeah, and with this one. I don't think it's even much spoil. Yeah, it's definitely not spoilers. Um, they introduce a new realm of, or reintroduce rather, a realm of force sensitivity. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah, from Rebels, the witches of Dathomir, and the uh, basically the handlers of the force, the the light, the dark, and the neutral. Yeah, they and, and they kind of delve into that some in this series. So I think they w- did that because uh, I was it say, was a felony thing. Yeah, uh, I think they did that because when they introduced it in Rebels, people just went fucking ape shit of how awesome that was, and they're like, "Please don't ruin this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please the bring world this- between worlds. Yeah. Please bring this back. This was a cool idea. Mm-hmm. The the whole Dathomir witches is is kind of a D and D thing, but like <laughs> it is a. Uh, it is cool that they could, you know, basically force create a weapon in midair. <laughs> yep, and they do that shit. And uh, yeah, I've seen clips on fucking okay. reels and shit. And then it, yeah, that's how, that's how stuff gets ruined for me a lot. <laughs> but like, it, it doesn't stop me from watching it. Like, I'm still going to go back and like, all right, what's the context of this? Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks it looks really fun. There's some really kind of weird, intense stuff for mm. Star Wars. Like, yeah. In the grand scheme of things, no, there's nothing scary or intense about this. In comparison to other Star Wars, it's pretty fucking intense. Like, there's necromancy yeah. and, like, you know, like, a lot of, like, 
weird zombie creepy shit going on yeah. like it, it's a darker star wars than you would expect i think this will be a fun like christmas time disney review mm-hmm. christmas time episode but we'll just review all the disney stuff yeah uh, but yeah i've seen some of the real stuff with the death troopers actual death troopers yes and for those who've ever read the book death troopers uh, i have a copy of it it's fantastic for yeah. a sci-fi fan like even if you don't like star wars it's a fun read and they mcu'd it yeah you know they did their own take of yeah. a death trooper but it is still heavily implied that all of the stormtroopers that have yeah. like the red bandages and stuff are reanimated corpses and every yeah. time they die they get brought back to life again yeah. um but yeah it's it's exciting to see that come out with disney and disney's got loki coming out what this friday yep uh loki comes out every uh wednesday night Tonight. I believe, or yeah. Thursday night. is It's one of the two, yeah. yeah. But uh, there are already two episodes in. Uh, I've been enjoying it a decent amount. Uh, episode one was fun. Episode two gave you whiplash, though. Yeah. Because uh, definitely no spoilers, because I understand that folks sometimes wait till the very end. Episode one ends with, we need to go to so-and-so so we can find so-and-so. Why? It's very important. We just have to find so-and-so so we can get to so-and-so. Okay, fine. Episode two opens with, okay, so and so is here. And then, like, within the first two seconds, they're like interacting with them. <laughs> it really feels like, like, so many jokes were being made on Twitter, being like, bro, did Disney upload episode three instead of episode <laughs> two? Like, I feel like we missed an entire episode of hunting down so and so and locating where they are. Like, all of a sudden, oh, we've got literal adr from owen owen wilson like you see the back of his fucking head and it's just and he's just like all right loki so yada 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 i'm blah 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 and you can tell it's absolutely adr and afterward i'm like they trimmed this down <laughs> they just gave us an exposition dump and we didn't see any lips move <laughs> no. but yeah it's like entertainment wise i think they're back on track but are they? Because <laughs> well, uh, all but one company. Uh, well, yeah. Well, I was gonna say on the realm of Disney. Um, yeah, some so much stuff canceled. So much shit is going on with Disney right now. Um, first things first. Um, it has been loosely confirmed, which we kind of suspected this to start with. We just never had any one kind of hint at it. It was all nerd speculation. It does appear that after Secret Wars, there's going to be a lot of retconning happening in the MCU because we've been dealing with so much multiverse and timeline things that Secret Wars is going to be kind of the getting rid of all the extra timelines and then merging into one. And with that in mind, there can only be one so-and-so. There can only be one so-and-so. And And that's where a lot of recasting and almost a lot of rebooting of the MCU is going to happen. Kind of ending it on the, hey, guess what? The universe just fucking died. Yeah. kind of idea and now we have a new iron man and a new thor and a new spider-man I think, and shit I think, like that i think they're probably just setting up for something that if i was to do it called marvel prime and it'll be like the new 52 dc or ultimates yeah so yeah yeah but like marvel prime universe right universe one <laughs> <laughs> and uh and before we go into the rest of it uh side bit of nerd news if I were to ask you the question, what is no. the <laughs> what is the us- universe designation for the MCU? Six one six. No, that's DC. Uh, uh, no, six one six is Marvel Comics main universe. Yeah. Uh, fuck, I don't know. Okay. So for the longest time, fans were constantly saying that the MCU in the grand universe of Marvel properties is Earth. One nine 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 nine. In the most recent Doctor Strange movie, it was said that that Earth was actually six one six, the main storyline we've been following for the last ten years. 
Well, that made people upset because they're like, no, 616 is like the main Marvel Comics storyline. You know, the X-Men fucking exist and shit like that. Exactly. Like, you know, if if we're to, you know, fully believe in the tapestry you're writing, this is supposed to be a separate universe, which is why it doesn't line up with the comics. Don't say this is 616. Otherwise, you're actually rewriting real history type deal, you know, within the nerd fandom, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Kevin Feige actually never said the MCU was Earth 199999. No. He never said that. And like even most recent, like a lot of people have actually been coming up being like, yeah, like where did this come from? Yeah. No one can figure out where this came from except for one passing comment. I think it was Feige during like the Thor, the first Thor movie, like tour run or press run. They were like, you know, so what earth is, you know, the current MCO? And he was like, oh, it's the one nine, 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 nine. Yeah. But like never made any sort of like declarative statement of like, well, in the earth that we're visiting now, because it's the main time we don't know. Yeah. So what do you think it would be kind of messy if they were to call this Earth 616, if that is the main Marvel comic continuity? I've always seen the MCU as its own comic series. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. And to put a number on it would just be pedantic and fucking ridiculous because oh, and then you get across the spider verse yeah so where like, ultimate spider or one of the spider man that goes oh yeah and that nerd for, uh and that doctor strange from earth 19999 yeah. so even he says yeah, the so, mcu is that and then you got like the what ifs and stuff like yeah which are negative universes so like this is what i hate and love about multiverse t- storytelling is it's the greatest trick to keep characters alive yep but it's also yank them out of another universe it's also the laziest version of writing (laughs) okay is it though because in order for a good multiverse story to work you really do have to have good writing otherwise it falls apart well that's the thing It, it still falls apart because we have standards for those characters we love and if we multiverse the fuck out of them if you do it too many times eventually the principles just fall apart and we're creating new ones a great example of this is miles morales (laughs) miles morales is a great spider man peter parker is Mm spider-man miles morales is spider-man from the bronx so there's no reason that you can't love them both but if you multiverse the shit out of it, you kind of just erase the original Mm Spider-Man, and then his story arc doesn't make any more goddamn sense. And see, and that was, you hit the nail on the fucking head with that, man. That was my number one problem I had when the original Miles Morales storyline started popping up in the comics. It's like, they started doing this major Spider-Verse thing, and it was before any of the MCU multiverse or even the animated Spider-Verse thing. I hated that shit because of exactly what you just said there. The reason that you know Spider-Man was something special is it's just a fucking kid that didn't ask for it, and he's having to learn, you know, how to be an adult now with all these, you know, extra responsibilities. It made for a great story. To know that there's like a thousand other Spider-Men that went through the same trials and tribulations, it's like. I don't know. As a genuine fan of the series, it kind of takes away a little bit of the punch. It takes a little bit of the specialness away. And that's the problem with the multiverse. That's a negative of multiverse storytelling. If you want to really fuck with it, take something else you really love and add a multiverse to it. Do it universal. You know, Frankenstein made by not science but aliens. Uh, make uh, vampires a virus. You know, make make the wolf. actually that would be kind of cool. Yeah, they did. It's called the Strain. Um, <laughs> no, do like a legit vampire movie where yeah. it was. Well, the Strain was a series that was fantastic. Uh, but like, if you were to do like a reboot of that and not have Russell Crowe play Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, um, <laughs> it could work to an extent. But like with Marvel. They did it first in comics. DC did it with the New 52. You know, I love the old characters. I do. I love a good Superman movie. I love a good Batman movie. But you can stop. <laughs> we got enough. We do. For we, a decade. For mm-hmm. a decade. Uh, I want a 10-year ban on Batman and Superman movies. 
That's all I want. A 10-year ban. We almost got one. Almost, but didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, like, I think I think we're good on Spider-Man films for a little while. I would agree. I would love a Sinister Six movie, but it's a setup movie. Set up the Sinister Six. I mean, I, I feel content because I feel like No Way Home... With yeah. their fearsome five, essentially, yeah, <laughs> I, that tickled my sinister six bone enough to where I'm like, I'm I'm cool. I, I really don't need the movie now. I saw my group of classic villains fighting Spider Man. I, I will say this: you, you might like this, but I saw somebody said, "Would it be more fun if in the No Way Home that when Tommy McGuire shows up, he had the black suit?" And that was the intro to Venom that we should have had. Oh. That he loses it in Tom Holland's Ooh. universe. Oh, that would have been During a knockdown drag out. But hey, we do have a symbiote in the universe now because yeah, Tom Hardy left a little piece of it. Whatever. Yeah. A little bit of DNA on some fucking napkins. <laughs> but, like, but, like, some, but somebody brought that up. I'm like, that would have been kind of neat. It kind of explained why he acts nuts at number three. Like, <laughs> I just still want to see Topher Grace fight Tom Hardy. Ooh, that'd be oh, that'd be fucking awesome. Yeah, motherfucker, I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> bam, bam. 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 <laughs> Well, moving on to other multiverse madness and shit going on with Marvel, um, we heard nearly a year ago at this point that Daredevil Reborn was going to be a new series coming to Disney+. Plus. Oh, was, yeah, it was going to be dark and gritty. He's going oh, to yeah. have that cool yellow suit. And, and even Feige was like, look, we know you like the brutality of the Netflix series. Remember, we are Disney. Mm-hmm. However we're going to try to not disappoint you. So he was even kind of heavily winking to the fact that like, this is going to be an adult show. Don't worry. Like we tested the waters with moon Knight. Remember all the gun violence in moon Knight? You saw some blood there. We tested it. None of y'all got mad. Let's see what we can now do with daredevil. Just walks up to a fucking person, blows their fucking brains up. Yeah. Exactly. Daredevil. Reborn. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> Give it that 70s cop feel. News has come out this week <laughs> that of the 18 episodes that were planned for the series, all but two have been scrapped. Damn. And they were nearly finished filming. Like they had to stop filming in the middle of the writer's uh, SAG after strike. Yeah. Um, and now that they're allowed to kind of go back to work and start piecing together the puzzle, I honestly believe that through the time of not working intensely that hard, the upper heads at Disney, Feige, whomever, might have finally taken a step back for that five minutes. When he wasn't answering those calls, he couldn't. He couldn't answer any emails. He's not getting any in. Looks at what's happening and went, "Uh uh-oh. This, I think we've been a little too busy. Yeah. Because reports are coming out that part of the reason that the Daredevil Reborn series is being redrafted and recut and refilmed is it was going to follow along kind of the lines of She-Hulk. It was going to be like law and order for the MCU and that we weren't actually even going to see Daredevil in his outfit until episode four at the end, which maybe wouldn't have been such a bad thing. But at the same time, if they were hinting to this being a continuation of the Netflix series, a spiritual successor, a season three, we don't need any, you know, backlog. We don't need any flashbacks. We don't need a backstory. That's already available to view on Disney Plus now. I think they just put that Daredevil series on there. Why are we waiting till episode four to give the fans what we're looking for? Yeah. So, so here's what I have a problem with the whole superhero franchise: is they'll announce something, start filming, cast, script, everything, and throw it in the trash can, report it as a loss, that woman, and not give a fuck. Even though those actors and directors said, that was some of my best work. You guys probably would have loved it. And probably because of contracts and rather written now, I can't tell you. 
what it was. I imagine that Batwoman movie probably would have been fun as fuck. From what I was hearing, it sounded to be. And it's crazy how, like, what, like, two, three days before, like, production was supposed to, like, officially wrap, they were like, yep, we're canceling it. Yeah, so, like, uh, like I think the only thing that was really left was, like, a handful of, like, CGI clips. Yeah, so, with, with that being said, like, I can't, it, it, it keeps the fan from getting their hopes up. And the movie theater will be eventually become a niche thing. Uh, as much as Martin Scorsese likes to bitch and fucking complain about superhero movies, they're still films. It's still cinema. It's a Shakespearean tale about power and responsibility. <laughs> I get it. It's no fucking... This was some flashing neon colors yeah, and some lasers. I get, I get it. It's not fucking Goodfellas. Uh, <laughs> but Jesus, it's still... It's not good, fellas, but we have a Hulk. Yeah. But, like, it's it's supposed to be entertaining. That's the whole point of fucking movies. And if you're just making it to film a loss because you're just not feeling Tax it. Tax write-off. Yeah. If you're not feeling it, then you just need to stop making fucking movies, man. I agree. Like, there's so much content out there in the world itself for storytelling. There's no reason where you have to be lazy about it you know if you tell me you're going to make something i'll wait for it you know it it's like a a nick cage superman movie that was such a funny idea to us but back in the day there were people our age that were just like man i can't wait to fucking see that movie nick cage is the shit and what'd you get nothing just a flash in the pan bullshit and then we get people who are dedicated to like the genre in which they want to do stuff like Ty West, who does horror movies, now has to contend with, and this is news now, A24 now wants to get into the IPs. mainstream. Yeah, the mainstream IP storytelling. Which, if anybody here has ever talked about A24, especially on this show, that's my bread and fucking butter when it comes to movies because they make indie horror films. Midsommar, Hereditary, uh, the House of the Devil. And Hereditary ne- is probably one of my favorites I've seen in a while. Out of the fucking nowhere, dude. I don't remember much advertising about that. Yeah, but out of fucking nowhere. Midsommar, out of nowhere. You know, uh, you're next. I went to the theater on a on just a matinee. That's a good one, too. I went to the theater on a matinee and saw that years ago. And I'm just like, I have no idea what this is about. It opens up with a brutal fucking murder. Like, oh, you got me now. I got to watch. I got to know why this guy in a sheet mask is killing people. But like, And, and even A24 <laughs> is good at making like non-horror films like uh, yeah. The Menu. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say The Menu a was a horror movie. That's definitely a thriller. Yeah. But like it, they are perfect at making those movies. Yeah. And now you're telling me, oh, we're still going to have that part, but because they don't make a lot of money. I'm like, okay, I get it. Money is the name of the game everywhere that's the name of the game but if i didn't have to pay 14 goddamn dollars to see it one time you could still make fucking money off of me watching it yeah. okay you fucking assholes so yeah so i find funny you mentioned that because um we're recording possibly two episodes tonight so i was kind of doing my research on one specifically but as a little bit of a brain drain as i was trying to still fix up the apartment in here um Kevin Smith and Mark Bernardin uh, do a show on YouTube called uh, Fat Man Beyond. Yeah. And they were cu- talking about the A24 uh, try- looking for and trying to acquire new IP. And Kev kind of looked at it the same way you did. Like, he was like, you know, come on, man. Because he's the indie filmmaker. Yeah. So he's just like, come on, man. You know, this, this just doesn't seem right, this, that, and the other. And Mark kind of comes from a little bit of a different background, a different school, which is what makes that a really interesting show. And I don't know. I kind of see where Mark Bernardin is kind of leaning with it. He goes, yeah, I see that. He goes, but if I'm at A24 and I'm looking for IP to supplement my cash flow... I'm going to be looking at stuff that's public domain. Yeah. What does an A24 Little Mermaid look like? What does an A24 Winnie the Pooh look like? What does an A24... And he started like listing off all of these different things. He goes, what 
interesting spin can my production company put on a classic story? He goes, so I think that could be a way to bring in the mass audiences to get them more money to help fund the weird off the wall things. Yeah. Kind of like a Miramax. Yeah. Miramax would fund, you know, weird off the wall things and then they'd release their fucking, you know, pulp fictions and everything else that would rake in the cash. So it's funny you brought up Miramax because uh, speaking of old production companies that are coming back, Orion is back making movies. Uh, really, Orion? Uh, if you if you've ever that's seen that's a name I've not heard, heard in a long time. time. Almost it's like uh, like Full Moon Productions. If you wanted to watch a shitty horror movie, Full Moon Production had you covered. Uh, they had a lot of puppets, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, master. But like it, it was just so funny, like with H twenty four doing this. If they were to get an IP, what would you want them to get? That hasn't been touched, really, a, a lot. Hmm. Well, unfortunately, it's been touched a lot, but I feel like out of all... Gross. Do what? What? <laughs> But out of all of like maybe classic IP or like classic storytelling to put their spin on, it it may sound contrived, but honestly, let them have a shot at Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Okay, I feel like they could maybe give a weird, subversive, weird look at Alice in Wonderland, and not maybe go uh, not the CGI nightmare that uh, what Tim Burton or whoever gave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking for that, but I don't know. Um, if not Alice in Wonderland, I really don't know. I'd have to maybe think on it for a minute. Fuck it. Uh, they probably don't have the licensing on it, but Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. They probably couldn't get it, but you know what? Show show a fucking... Well, they couldn't do like a Disney version. Yeah. They could do Beauty and the Beast, which is a Grimm's fairy tale, but... Mm -hmm. Or like a Cinderella where she bowls her sisters in a pot. See, I wasn't gonna, I, I wasn't gonna steal that one because that's the one Mark Bernard mentioned. He goes, yeah. get, he's like, give me like a, you know, classic Cinderella. Yeah, you know, and shit like that. So I, I wasn't gonna steal his. Yeah. So like, I would love them to do one of the comics I grew up with, Wildcats, because it's a DC and no one remembers it. Wildcats is one of the few DC creations that never gets brought up because it's their version of the fucking MX Men. And, like, it is so off the wall. Bro, I completely forgot about fucking Wildcats. But it's because you're not a goddamn fan. You don't give a fuck about anything. You you walked out of a Kevin Smith movie. (laughs) You goddamn piece of faker. But no, you gotta give that calendar back. But as <laughs> soon as you said that, I was just like, "Oh, oh Red Hood, Black Eyes, I, I Double Guns." I immediately guns. fucking saw the image. Holy fuck! A group of fucking misfit abomination heroes just <laughs> fucking kicking ass and taking names. Fuck it, yeah. That that'd be my fucking jam, bro. Hmm. Now I'm just trying to think. Could have been, dude. If they gave a twenty four Swamp Thing. You know how horrific that would be? Okay, let's go in. I uh, see. I was trying to think of like stuff that wasn't horror and kind of like putting their spin on it. Okay, if we're going in that direction, I got to go with my classic. Give me the Frankenstein monster story, but do it Mary Shelley style where we combine Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein into one film because there's no reason Bride has to be a second film. As much as I love that movie, the first fucking 40 minutes of it is all filler. You don't get any meat until like the last 30 minutes of Bride of Frankenstein. I think I think it'd be good if you did um, like, like Ty West do something like that. Mm. Make it very suspenseful in the beginning mm-hmm. and then kind of carry on into a part two. Yeah, because the original book, Bride and the original kind of ran concurrently. Yeah, because so essentially, it's a, it's a in, story. if I remember correctly in the book, Dr. Frankenstein was just like, holy shit, I fucking did it. Now time to make a bitch. Well, <laughs> <laughs> in the story of Frankenstein, he makes something, it escapes. He realizes that Frank, the monster he created, is killing people in his family. And then, as a repercussion, he creates a bride for him. And that's that's full like third act shit. Yeah, bride, bride is actually nothing but third act. Yeah, because he then flees, mm-hmm. and then Frank, uh, Doctor Frankenstein, goes after him, and then it ends in the Arctic. Yeah, on a snowy mist. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, reading that in high school was the shit. Yeah, but no, like this, but like take a 
with with the whole A twenty four. I know this is going to be a whole episode about just us A twenty four fan fiction. But like, I was going to say we could make that an episode. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I, I was like entertainment wise, like news wise. That's where I would leave it. Yeah. Everything else is just dystopian science fiction for me. <laughs> or science faction. <laughs> science faction. You know, your content creation is hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. You know, you're trying to just come up with ideas. And mm-hmm. What I like about ours is, you know, it's very free flow a little bit. You know, yeah. A lot of, you know, quick on the trigger, shoot from the hip kind of stuff, which I love doing anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I think if you, but that's just me. You know, that's for me, it's easier for me to tell a joke if it just pops in my fucking head and I don't have to edit it when right. it comes out my motherfucking mouth <laughs> that's for you to do i know i was about to say i was just like you leave that on me yeah but when we're at the milestone of the parking lot i'm not stopping <laughs> i'll say what the fuck i want um but what i really love is this goes back to drop out is those people are free to do it without too much constraint you know um uh, People like Brendan Lee Mulligan, who are just full of fucking storytelling, has stepped away from storytelling to be part of the of the game. So, when I brought up the two Dimension Twenties, he's only game master for one. He's playing a character in another one. And but it's probably also good for him because it gives them that recharge. Yeah, but it also is fucking terrifying because if you get someone who can tell the story off off the cuff and then make him a character in the game. And you're trying to tell your story, and this master of fucking this rack on tour is just sitting there, being like, "I can tell you what my character can do." <laughs> you know, it's just like a choose your own adventure with a gun. You know, this is like holy fuck. <laughs> you know, well, considering we only have a little bit of time left between now and Halloween, uh, and of course this is going to be out before Halloween. Uh, what would you recommend for our fine listeners for like maybe a top? three horror movies they ought to check out this year maybe not top three your favorites but just top three that you're like you know what if you've not seen this you ought to check it out uh yeah uh, i actually spoke to uh, hammer about this uh, last time um some of the newer horror movies just because they don't get a lot of love and we'll uh, still do an episode yeah. on that uh check out it came out a few years ago it's a fun horror movie ready or not the hide and seek game fucking fantastic it's one of the few times i had to leave the theater because it caught fire um <laughs> i went to the theater by myself to go watch this movie a fire broke out and i got a free ticket and never came back <laughs> um but no that one um you're next mm-hmm. fantastic horror movie from back in like 2013 2014 i think um and smile smile was just a fun halloween movie yeah it's it's no you know malignant, but like because that's got karate, uh, <laughs> karate, karate, Kiyo. Uh But no, those those three movies alone, right? Out of the new horror, three different directors, you know, just really banging it out, man. And, oh yeah. And even though they're a few years apart, it still makes it fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably mine would be uh, Black Phone. Fun. That's a really fun one. Uh, that one kind of caught me by surprise. With Ethan Hawke. Yes, uh, that was very enjoyable. Um, Us, I, I think out of all the Jordan Peele movies, that that one's probably my favorite. I came home from work the other day, and my dad's like, "Have you ever heard of a movie called Us?" I'm like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, "Oh, we watched it. Oh, how'd you like that?" He's like, "It was pretty good." I'm just like, "You'll love Get Out." And see, nope. <laughs> see, I did enjoy those, but I don't know something about Us just really hit just right like i'm not gonna spoil it for folks i haven't seen but like when all like when that final puzzle piece gets laid at the very end and like that one extra second of that scene plays out and you're like oh fuck oh fuck oh shit Uh oh uh oh uh oh they did the wrong thing Ooh, uh oh that was like i forget the fucking cartoon character or the uh, guy was just i was i was looking at being like "Uh oh uh oh yeah that's no good Uh oh that's no good (laughs) like that's literally the voice i had in my head that dustin hoffman rain man yeah Yeah. there you go that's what i was thinking of Uh oh uh oh no no that's no good uh so yeah black phone us and then 
honestly, and I'm throwing it out there with the pretense of I've not watched it again this year, but as soon as I saw like the trailer for it again, all the memories came rushing back. Motherfuckers, you have got to watch Return of the Living Dead. Do you want a party? No, Gosh. seriously, it's like I was getting together a Halloween playlist for my work and just the trailer for that popped up. I was like, ooh, that'd be a fun trailer to have mixed in with all the horror music. And it's like I started watching it again. I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, God, I forgot how fun this movie was. I gotta watch this again. So, no, if you motherfuckers, especially in you, you punk rock fans, have not seen Return of the Living Dead, you've got to see it. Hey, it's man, where trash goes? <laughs> She's still in the cemetery, man. Fucking Linnea Quigley. <laughs> fucking uh, people fucking in a cemetery. Come dude, on now. Dude, Linnea Quigley, not once, not twice, but thrice. This woman goes full frontal in three different horror oh, movies. Oh, yeah. Me and Christy talked about it at length a little bit <laughs> <laughs> on uh, some of our favorite horror movie episodes. And holy shit, that's a fun one. Oh, but, yeah. Yeah, she. It, it is the punk rock horror movie. And I mm-hmm. told you before we started talking about it, uh, Return of Living Dead 2 has the exact same cast. They didn't even bother to change the cast. They were just like, hey, you guys want to stick around for some overtime? So we can <laughs> and that's what it is. It's an overtime. <laughs> All right. So now this time your name is Steve. I thought it was Jay. This time it's that, that, Steve. That was the first 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Today you're Steve. Yeah. Tuesday, Steve. Uh, but no, it's, it's, those are fun movies. Three is probably the one that gets the most love because it's so... It was the 90s horror movie. It is so batshit stupid. Yeah. It is metal as fuck. Like, but now the punk rock one, man. 45 Grave does the soundtrack. And oh, man. The puppeteering alone. It's and the, horrible, but amazing. It, it's so well done. But the best thing they ever did was the Tar Man. Yes. From in the basement. And that thing is great. fucking great. And the way he just like emotes and it's mm-hmm. all puppeteering. And the tongue coming out at the it's, same time. Yeah, but it's all like puppeteering and stuff like that. I don't know when the last time you saw the movie was, but they do a full naked body dude coming running out of a fucking like uh, freezer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And they cut his head off and they do puppeteering with the head. It's fucking fantastic. Uh, I, I already got it downloaded. It's literally on my iPad. That, that would be a fun commentary episode. We'll do it. We'll do it. We, 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 we've still got some time. I can get a release. If anything, that could be a Samhain release. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would say this has been a pretty nice episode of the Couch Bro Tatoes. There was no main topic. We just had some news to cover. And again, it's been like two, three weeks since we sat down, just the two of us to chat. So it was nice just to. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. And it was nice to be able to get back at the table and talk about all the random bullshit that comes in our heads. It's a nice little refresher, a nice little recharge, especially not doing it at one o'clock in the morning. Can you (laughs) dig it? Yes, I can. But... Make sure and check out all the other fantastic shows on the network. Cryptic Conspiracy Cult, History We Forgot, This Fuggin' Guy, and of course, Something Good For Ya. And check back here every week, every other week, whenever we get episodes out. Just make sure and hit that subscribe button and sign up for the Discord. Link is in the episode description. Don't be like Dave. That's going to be the next t-shirt. <laughs> I've said that enough times because I've sent him the Discord request every week and he's like, oh yeah, dude. I'm going to get on it. Never fucking does it. So don't be like Dave. Actually sign up for the Discord. Communicate with us. Have some fun. Give us some ideas. And Chris, do you have any four final thoughts for us? I left it out of the news segment, but the New York police have a robot roaming the streets of New York, alerting people of crimes and trying to grab people, and also ring camera which is part of Amazon, wants you to keep it on at all times so the cops know where you are at all times. So please, if you love your family and you love your country, smash that shit as soon as you fucking see it. I will not be held back. I will not be told no. I will vote twice if I have to or thrice if I need to. Please go out and burn down your local Best Buy to prevent this technology from being released. This is Chris Morrison coming from you live from the last place without a ring camera. (laughs) You've been listening to the Something Good Network. If you liked what you heard, you can follow us on Instagram, and check out the other great shows on the network. 
Link is in the episode description.